There are various ways to meter light when shooting film. Traditional handheld meters, cameras with built-in light meters that show you the measurements in the viewfinder, or even fully automatic cameras where the camera reads the light and decides the settings on its own. However, phones too can now be used as light meters and in my opinion have various advantages to the other options, especially when used with cameras that have no light metering capabilities. So to meter this I have two options, I can use the iPhone or the handheld meter. With the meter set to 125 ASA, it gives me the options of 1000 at 5.6, 500 at f8, 250 at f11, f16, 125th and 160th at f22. However, the thing is that this picks up the light from the entire scene in front of you. Whereas the iPhone, the iPhone can be used to choose certain spots to meter from. So I can choose the sky, the grass, the trees, and I can set up my framing specifically to how I want the final image to look so that it meters the frame. Whereas this will just meter the ambient surrounding light, which sometimes includes some that I'm not gonna include in the scene. This photo came out relatively flat due to harsh direct light. However, as can be seen in the shadows along the tree line, the shadow details have been retained very well. There is also some detail in the sky, despite it being very brightly exposed. As my FP4 roll was already almost finished when I started, I now loaded up some HP5. Another thing is this meter only goes up to F22 and my lens goes to F32. You can always work it out by doing a stop of difference, but just means that that doesn't directly have the correct readouts for this lens. And in this scene, there's some shade here, there's shade over here, and with this meter, it just takes everything in the scene, whereas with my phone, I can really um, meter here, meter there, meter the highlights and see if anything will be underexposed. In these two photos, you can see some relatively deep shadows, but with plenty of detail, and lots of detail in the tree stump and the sky. Now that is what I came here to photograph. got an overall readout of 125th. When I uh, choose the shadows, it's um, 180th, so that I can hopefully get these horses who are in the shade to be exposed. The highlights should be retained because it's a color negative film, so. These three photos, once again, show lots of foliage detail in the shadows, because I took the readings for the shadows to make sure that as much was retained as possible. This scene was a very harshly front-lit scene, so retaining highlight detail was a priority, and therefore the shadows are very deep and start to lose a little bit of detail compared to the other previous shots. For this scene, there was quite high contrast, so I made sure to focus on metering for my subject to ensure they would be well exposed and hoping that the highlight and shadow detail would be retained. As it is negative film, I relied on the fact that it would be able to retain the highlights quite well. This set of photos and the previous one would have probably been quite difficult on slide film. Also, while shooting, I met this very kind stranger who eagerly showed me his Rollo Flex. One of the joys of shooting film is the beautiful interactions I can have with a very different generation.